Good morning, everybody. I'm super duper excited because it's rare that I get the Stu McLaren on a live with me <laughs> and I get to chat with him with all of you. If you don't know, Stu McLaren has been my mentor, gosh, Stu, since 2018. I know, like, it's crazy. Six years now. Um, and there's been a lot of ups and downs with my business. There's been a lot of explosive growth with my businesses. And Stu has been a part of that um, all along the way. And today, we're going to talk a little bit about that. I was just looking at your sales page, Stu, and I, man, I got like the front and center full page view on the sales page. Yeah. Um, but really what we want to talk about, what I want to bring to you guys today is we talk about subscription boxes all the time and how it's building this reoccurring revenue into our business. And we're good at that. But what we're, what we want to talk about just a little bit more in depth with Stu today, and he's here to, he's here to answer some questions for you is how do we bring another reoccurring revenue stream into our business? Because one is great. Two is even better. Yeah. And so we're going to talk about that. Stu, for everybody here that doesn't know you, why don't you give them just like a little background, who you are, what you do, and then we'll just dig right into it. Yeah, well, thanks first and foremost for having me, Sarah. And I just want to say your journey over the last several years has been absolutely uh, remarkable and beautiful to watch. You know, like I've watched you uh, go from a retail shop owner to a subscription uh, business that's primarily local to national to then having, you know, multiple memberships, both information based, subscription box based. It's been absolutely incredible. And I think that that's really why I'm so passionate about this topic of recurring revenue and memberships and all the different uh, sizes and shapes and forms that a membership can take because it creates tremendous to stability for every single business owner. And for me, my journey started back in 2008. I had a consulting business. It was going great. But the problem was I could only grow that business by giving more of my time and I didn't have any more time to give. So something had to give in a way to be able to be able to reach my entrepreneurial goals and dreams. And also so I could be present as a father and a, as a husband. And ultimately, a mentor of mine uh, encouraged me to start a membership. I didn't know what it was at the time, but he said, look, it's a way for you to be able to share what you're doing with your private clients, but with more people and be able to scale that opportunity to help more people. I like the sounds of that. But then in 2008, the technology was not what it is today. And so I was left scrambling. I was frustrated. I was trying to figure things out. And a friend of mine ultimately... Uh, suggested that we team up and create a really easy solution uh, for ourselves. And that's ultimately what we did. It went on to become the world's number one membership platform for WordPress. Mm -hmm. Before I knew it, we were powering over 70,000 online communities and memberships. And that's when I started to see like, what were this small group of memberships doing that were growing year over year differently than everybody else? And so I started paying attention to that small group. I started applying the same strategies in my own memberships. They all took off, became six, seven-figure memberships. And then I just started sharing it and teaching it. And that's what I've been doing ever since. And it's been some of the most fulfilling work, watching people go from an idea or a passion or an interest and watching them be able to create a membership and serve hundreds thousands, even tens of thousands of people and be able to build this incredible business that has that stability and predictability. So it is something that I am passionate about. I believe every entrepreneur should have as many recurring revenue streams as they possibly can. And that's why, you know, I love talking about this. Well, as you're talking, my product brain automatically goes off, right? So you're talking about how you were doing this one-to-one -one consulting, right? And it's the same way when we're doing one-off orders. Like I was at the warehouse this morning grabbing some stuff before I came home and they're do they're packing one-to-one -one orders. It takes more time. Mm. It takes, uh, There's a lot more variables in that. So when we think about this one-to-one -one consulting versus one-to-one -one, um, orders, it's the same thing for subscription boxes. You can do like a hundred subscription boxes in the same amount of time that it usually takes to pack 10 different orders because mm. they're all the same. And it's really the same concept when you're talking about the membership. Mm. And, you know, I, what I love is the fact that we can do both. Yes. And we have so many people in common um, here, not only members of mine, but members of yours that have taken both the physical product 
made a subscription out of it and also turned that into a membership. And I'd love to talk about a, a few of them there. You might know them as the creative club, <laughs> um, but you know, I, I would love to talk about them for a little bit because there's different scenarios, right? Mm. So let's talk about Casey hope real quick because Casey, Hope, Great story. she's got a subscription box. Um, and it's tied to a membership. So it's an all-in-one membership subscription box combo. It's called Whatever Letter. And what Casey does is that she teaches lettering. Um, it's, it started off to really be a lettering membership, and that's what she was going for. But she realized how important the physical component to that membership was going to be. So she tied it to a subscription box. So Whatever Letter is a membership learning about lettering, but they get a physical box component component every single month. And it's that combination of live tutorials, recorded tutorials, community based because she has a community that they um, they let her together with. But then she's also getting that physical component. Do you want to talk about the type of membership that is? Yeah. And before I do, I want to just touch on Casey because one of my favorite stories about Casey was, um, you know, she also she has that uh, subscription box uh, with the membership, the lettering membership. And um, but she also has a physical art studio. Yeah. And one of the things, one of my favorite moments with uh, Casey was in 2020 when the pandemic hit, I got a message from her. I think it was like on March uh, 18th or something like that. And she said, you know, normally she would have been super scared because you know in that moment she had to close her studio they made the hard decision to close the studio and so that meant that you know there was no income coming in from people coming into her actual studio and she said normally i would have been freaked out in that moment she said but i'm just so grateful because i have a membership and so the doors can you know we're not the light you know the bills can still get paid our staff can still get paid she said i can still pay myself thanks to the membership and then what was interesting was literally like a few weeks later, she sent me another email and that, I think it came on like April 4th and the message said, I just had another, you know, light bulb moment. She's like, I'm launching another membership. And what she realized was during the pandemic, there were, you know, millions of parents, myself included, who had young kids at home who now couldn't go to school. And we're like, what the heck do we do with all these kids? And so she had this light bulb moment, which was like, oh my gosh, like, what I'm teaching uh, in the studio, uh, what I used to teach in the studio, I could just teach at home. And so she launched a whole nother digital membership. She had 400, almost 500 members uh, within just a few months. And that's just because she had the skill set to be able to realize, see an opportunity, and then to be able to act on it and create another membership. So I love Casey, Casey's story. And, you know, she's a great example of you know, the different types of memberships that we can create, you know, rough, just off the top of uh, my head for everybody, there's really four main types. One would be a product based membership. This is your world, Sarah, this is like subscription boxes. This is like candles of the month, earrings of the month, you know, uh, you name it of the month. My wife belongs to a membership called Loeb Love, they send, you know, uh, earrings every quarter. So there's all kinds of physical product memberships. Second would be like service-based memberships. So Mary Claire Fredette in our community, she's a massage therapist. Instead of hoping that clients come back every day uh, or every month, she created a membership. They pay a flat fee and they get a certain number of massages that gets more regular uh, massages for her clients and it gives her more regular steady income. And I so that's I've got the blowout membership. We can get that. <laughs> no, I have no doubt, no doubt that you've got the blowout membership for sure. But that's a great example, right? Like you want to go and do it anyway. And so why not just make it easy for your customers? And then at the same time, create predictability for yourself as a business owner. And there are many examples of service-based memberships. The car wash across the road. Another great example of that. You can go through one time for 10 bucks or you can pay 12 bucks a month and go through an unlimited number of times, right? That's a service-based membership. No the brainer. No brainer, no brainer. The third is like a knowledge-based membership. These are the most popular and actually the easiest to create because we don't have any like, as you were saying, physical products. We don't have to like create any, uh, you know, source any physical products and bring uh, ship them in or anything of that nature. Like it's knowledge, it's information. But this is where we're helping people solve an ongoing problem. That could be like uh, somebody's in a terrible relationship and they want to, you know, have an amazing relationship. Well, that problem's not going to solve itself overnight. That takes time. Perfect for a membership. Or you could be 
teaching people a skill. This is what you do in one of your memberships, right? Like you're teaching people how to become a profitable subscription box owner. Like that is a skill that doesn't just happen overnight. But yeah. the same is true in so many uh, communities where people are teaching them how to paint. Like our friend Christy Hawkins is a great example of that, right? So you're not gonna just all of a sudden have a thought, hey, I'd like to learn how to paint and then boom, become a great artist. Like it just takes time to learn that skill. So well, go ahead. Let's talk about Tamara in this scenario because okay. our friend Tamara Bennett, um, who's in my mastermind, is also a great example of having a membership and a subscription box. Now, mm -hmm. Tamara started with her membership and it was a knowledge based membership um, where she's teaching people how to paint door hangers. And um, she did that for several years. But the need came about to have the physical things to paint on. And so um, about a year and a half ago, she created a subscription box around that complemented the membership. And it's called the big box of blanks. So now she's, and it's complimentary. It's not together like Casey's. Casey's is together. Tamara's is separate. So mm. she has membership, reoccurring revenue, all the people that want to learn the paint. And then she has a quarterly subscription box where they get three of the blanks, um, one for each month of the, the things that she's teaching in the membership. So it's complimentary to the membership. Now she has two reoccurring revenue streams for that same customer. And that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about how we can do that. It's not like, let's go create a whole bunch of memberships for different ideal customers, different audiences, and start building more audiences. We mm. don't have time for that. Mm. How can we take what we already do in our product-based business and turn it into digital income? It's about Remember stacking the momentum, right? Like you, yeah. you hit that nail on the head. Like I love that, uh, the story of Tamara. And by the way, the first time I heard her share with me, you know, being up here in Canada, I was like, what a minute, like decorative door hangers? Like, I, I was like, are you talking about like the things on the hotel room that said like, no, I was still sleeping? And she's like, oh, Stu, clearly you are not uh, from the South. No, uh, no, these are like, you know, and I got, I finally got it. I'm like, oh, okay. But it's amazing to see the community that she's created. And I love the fact that in one sense, she's teaching people how to do it. In the other sense, she's providing them the tools and resources to be able to do it. And as you said, like some people uh, will have a need for both. Others will have a need for one or the other. And she gets to serve that customer by stacking the momentum. She's staying in her lane. She's still focused on the same thing. It's not like she's got a decorative door hanger membership and a cat membership. Like those two have nothing to do with each other, right? right. Like she's staying in the lane, same customer, same profile. She's just finding other ways to be able to serve them. Yeah. And I was talking with Amy last week. Amy's also in my mastermind and she, she's very similar. She is, she is sending out a box of tier trade items and she's showing up live and she's teaching people how to paint them and decorate with them. And she's the per perfect person to really develop a membership that will create yet another revenue stream for things that she's already doing. Yeah. Yeah. It, and there's so many uh, fun examples of being able to take a product that you've already got and then be able to teach people around that product. Like one of my very first memberships was I mentioned earlier, like my first software company that we launched, we started noticing in the support, like a lot of people were sending in questions that were not necessarily about the product, but were more about like ideas and strategies. And so we spun off another uh, membership so we had the software itself, and then we just spun off a membership teaching people how to grow uh, with different ideas and strategies. And the same could be true if you think about any like product-based business. Like there's the actual product that people use and consume, but then it's like, well, what ideas could you provide that would help people use that product or get more out of that product or be able to, you know, do things better, faster, easier with that product? Uh, so there's all kinds of ways because to think about it's yeah. about consuming them. You know, you've, you've taught me that well. You got to consume the contents, whether those are fig physical contents that are inside the box or whether that's digital contents like inside my Launcher Box membership. I need my subscribers to consume the contents, mm. right? And so if you've got one that helps you do consume the contents to the other, it's like they go hand in hand and they're just going to continue to make your retention stronger and help, you know, re retain your customers a lot longer. Absolutely. You know, I think of like, you know, even what you provide in your subscription box, uh, how 
Um, you know, you, you always have these cute little outfits and all, all kinds of stuff. And, and you're always, uh, teaching, uh, the ladies how to get the most out of the items that you're providing in the box. Well, just think about it. Like, imagine if you were to, you know, even team up with, you know, different, um, you know, uh, Instagram influencers, as an example, who are always talking about fashion and always talking about stuff like that's a great another idea. Like, even if you don't want to be the person, you know, teaching the material inside of a membership, there's always opportunity to team up with others who are already doing it. They've already got an audience. And then you could team up and create a great partnership and membership. So anyways, I can talk about this stuff all day long, um, but I just saw, did you just uh, pull up yeah. Lisa? Lisa I Bean? heard you were talking about Lisa last night. So we, we got to know, tell us, tell us about Lisa. Lisa's a part of Scale Your Box and, and Launch Your Box. She's another great example. I love Lisa. She's got multiple memberships, uh, physical uh, box memberships, subscription box memberships. They're in the geocaching niche. I had never even heard of geocaching before I met uh, Lisa. And if you're not familiar with it, it's like this incredible like adventure where you are you know, solving puzzles and, you know, you know, following clues and going to these different places and literally all around the world and then uncovering the clue that sends you to the next clue. And it's like this whole crazy, it's, I couldn't believe it. But anyway, uh, Lisa has multiple subscription boxes, again, staying in the same lane uh, where she is serving the same customer just in different ways within her different memberships. So in some cases, she's teaching uh, the clients and customers about geocaching, how to become uh, a better uh, cacher. I don't know if that's what they call themselves, but uh, you, you get on saying we're going to coin that today. We're going to go ahead and have that copyrighted. <laughs> That's right. But she's so in some cases, she's teaching them and other cases, she's providing them like supplies and materials in the subscription boxes. So again, it's another example of being able to serve the same customer in multiple ways with multiple memberships. Yeah, I, we've got a we've got a question here from Jennifer, who's also in my mastermind. Now, what I love about Jennifer is that she has multiple streams as well. She's a product based business. She also created a VIP membership off of the product based business that gives you specific benefits within her um, product based business. But now she's just recently launched a digital membership. Mm. So her question is teeth. Tips on keeping the momentum and sticking to the plan. I'm in month two and I want to scratch it and start over. And listen, we're going to, we're just going to give Jennifer some tough love here. She <laughs> always wants to scratch it and start over whatever it is. Um, sometimes she'll scratch it before she even gets it started. So what tips do we have for Jennifer to keep her going? Well, Jennifer, I want you to know you're not alone uh, in the sense that if you're a creator, you most likely love the art of creating. So that means starting new stuff right? Yeah. But all you got to do is just kind of channel that creative energy in a different way. And so for me, like I'm very much the same. I love starting stuff. I love creating stuff. There's an excitement. There's an energy around that. But when it comes to a membership, I'm always just thinking about like how I can create a different or new or an improved experience for my existing members. Like, you know from a subscription box that the value of a customer and the value of the business increases significantly the more a customer stays. So if a customer only stays for one month or two months, the value is quite low. But if a customer stays for eight months, nine months, 12 months, 14 months, 22 months, which many of our customers in our community stay, then that value of that customer increases exponentially. So Jennifer, what I would encourage you to do is to play a game with yourself. Like, how can you make it fun? How can you make it interesting? You know, and one of the best ways to do that is think of your membership almost like, like a Netflix series, you know, like, you know, when the end of an episode and then like, there's like the, a juicy hook and you're just like, ah, darn it. Like, Okay, one more episode, one more episode. That's like the famous words from my wife and I. What, just one more, just one more. And then we got to go to bed. Well, inevitably, like you end up watching like two or three because they are so darn good at creating hooks that compel you to watch the next episode. What if you applied the same principles and philosophy to your content and your membership? Imagine if at the end of one month, you create a hook or a surprise or something intriguing that's gonna get revealed next month. And so now you have like this fun game with your audience where they can't wait to see it, you can't wait to reveal it, but the moment you reveal it, you you know have another hook that keeps them interested and compelled to see the next month. So from a creative standpoint, that's where I'd encourage you to channel your energies. How can you create 
a fun, memorable experience that is not only rewarding for you, but also rewarding for your members and keeps them passionate and interested too. I love that. Um, and I think if you, I mean, you gamify everything. I feel like you gamify your shopping trip at the grocery store. But um, I think that if you can keep gamifying what you're doing, it makes it exciting. It doesn't make it mundane. It doesn't make it routine for you. Mm. Now we're going to do something that Stu, that I don't typically do. And you know, that's, you know, this about me. Uh, I'm going to share my screen really quick. Um, but I wanted to share, I wanted to share this page. We're going to talk about Sarah Williams and I don't do this very often because you know how I feel about that. But I, I want, because I don't want to talk about myself, I would just want you to talk about me. Um, I want to talk about what's possible mm. because you've watched me go from like zero to a hundred, basically. You've watched me literally change my whole life mm -hmm. with the reoccurring revenue that, um, that I've built. And I, and I want you to talk about it because I'm not good at talking about myself. Well, when I met you, you were super shy, super quiet, didn't say a word to anybody, kept to yourself. And you were just like in your own zone, doing your own thing with your retail shop and you were doing phenomenally well. And then you were savvy and realized that you had customers coming into your shop that were buying similar items. You turn that into a subscription box and you're serving that local uh, you know, customer base. But what I love about you is you think far bigger than where you're at right now. You're always thinking about like, how can I, you know, do more, reach more, accomplish more, even though you're super quiet and humble. And so at that time you're like, okay, how do I go from a, a local customer base to serving people nationwide? Like if I've got the subscription box, I can send this, you know, to people, you know, nationwide. And so that subscription box grows from 300 to more than 3000. And then in a very short period of time, you start realizing like people are asking you questions about this. You've got expertise around subscription boxes. Like why not turn that into a membership? And I've not seen somebody go from zero to a million dollar plus membership as quickly as you did, especially because you were starting that audience from scratch. Yeah. But one of the things that I think is really important for people is to realize like you may have like big dreams, big goals, big ambitions, but it all starts with taking that next right step. And that's exactly what you did. And you took that next right step and you then took the next one and the next one and the next one. And before long, within a very short period of time, you had grown a second multi-million dollar membership. This is why I'm so proud of you because it's not even just the multiple recurring revenue streams. It's not even the fact that you've got multiple million dollar memberships. It's what I watched and witnessed you then becoming like watching you be able to provide for your family, watching you when, you know, you had terrible flooding happening in your home and knowing that you could fix that. You could sort that out. You weren't concerned or worried watching you grow in confidence in who you are, watching you build an online presence where you're online. When I first met you, you weren't doing broadcasts. You weren't doing videos and just watching you be able with that confidence, be able to serve hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of people because you're stepping into a new version of yourself. And I think this entrepreneurial journey, it is up and down all the time. But at the end of it, imagine who we become is that better version of ourselves. But we've got to be willing to take that next step. We've got to be willing to hold that space for that bigger, better, brighter version of ourselves, even if we don't know who he or she is actually going to be. So for me, watching your journey has been an absolute blessing, Sarah. And it's just a testament to what can happen in such a short period of time when you just start taking that next right step. And I would have, I would have not taken the membership step had it not been for your encouragement, mm -hmm. had it not been for that gentle push. You kept pushing, sometimes gentle, sometimes not so gentle. Um, <laughs> But really encouraging me to step into who I already was, um, but me not having the self-confidence to do it. Mm. And you're so right about this journey is so personal, like having the confidence that I do now. If you would have looked at me, say, five, six years ago is a completely different person. But that's mm. from taking a risk and winning, taking another risk 
and learning because we didn't mm. necessarily win, but keep building on the last step that we just took. Mm. And so that's, that's what I encourage people here. Now, you know, that was a membership for me. It was a membership in the form of a subscription box first. And that's how I started the journey, but it turned into a membership as far as my knowledge base memberships that turned into a second membership that turned into also a mastermind. So now I have these three levels of my knowledge base membership um, that support me now, you know, as a single parent now, and I'm providing for my household and all the things that I've been through over the last year um, has that confidence that mm. when I kept taking that next step and I kept having, whether it was a small win or a giant win sometimes, that confidence kept building for me. Yeah. Confidence kept building for me. And it's who you see now. It's the person that got a book deal. It's the person that's on YouTube, that's doing a podcast. Like it's, it's that person now, but that person didn't exist mm. before I started to gain the confidence in those wins that I was having. And confidence doesn't come just like out of thin air. Confidence comes as a result of like, you know, taking that next step, experimenting, trying, surrounding yourself with people who get you, understand you, want to support you and cheer you on. And, uh, you know, it's been a beautiful, beautiful thing to watch. In fact, I'm going to just do something fun. Uh, I know we didn't talk about this, but in the chat, uh, I would love uh, everybody who's watching and listening, just put like, what is your favorite thing uh, about Sarah? What's their favorite thing that you've learned about Sarah? Why uh, and how has Sarah inspired you? I want you to put it in the chat. You know, because what's interesting is like many times what we see in others, we uh, and what we see and admire in others is like the same characteristics that we want to develop in ourselves. And, you know, Susan, I see, uh, just said she's genuine. Uh, somebody just said authenticity. Uh, Gina just said she is real. And, and this is exactly why, you know, Sarah, you have thrived uh, in the you know, uh, membership space. And that's because you are who you are. And there was a turning point, you know, in, in one of our masterminds, I remember it was in San Francisco, and I had a heart to heart, you mentioned like, Sometimes, uh, you know, I, you know, softly encourage and sometimes I'm a little more like, you know, direct. And I remember this particular moment. Um, you had this like epiphany moment where you realized, hey, you know what? Like, I just need to lean into and speak to women like me. Women I was the influencer of my business and I yes. realized that. And you you were hiding behind it. You were even having discussions about like having somebody else like be the front person for your business. And then you had this moment where you realized like, wait a minute, like uh, the people who buy from me can relate to me. They, they, they see themselves in me. If I just, if I'm just having, you know, the, the courage to, to just start being me and sharing me, maybe that will attract more. And it did. And that's what we're seeing come up in the chat. Like your, on this, your authenticity, the fact that you're genuine, the fact that you're real, like people connect to you because of that. And so I just share this with everybody because the things that we love and see in Sarah are often the things that we need to develop ourselves in our own character. And my encouragement to you is to, to step into that, to take that next right step, to have that confidence, to be who you are, and to be able to use that and infuse that throughout your business. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be zero to a million dollars, right? Because that would scare probably half of this chat away right now. But what if that meant an extra thousand dollars a month? What if that meant you could pay the mortgage from your membership once a month? What if that meant you could pay your car payment instead of, you know, having to scramble around and, and cut expenses here and there. Right now, our economy is just so tight. Everyone's paying so much more for food and gas and just everyday necessities. What if you had a thousand dollars more in your bank account yes. to work with? And that could start with a membership. It doesn't have to be zero to a million. It could be zero to 10,000. It could be, it, what if you had an extra amount of money that you could work with that was reoccurring revenue. Donna says, I'll take an extra thousand dollars a month. All <laughs> of us would, because and that's what this could do. So I don't want you to think of Sarah's story. Yes, it could totally happen for you. And I would wish that for you. You could go from zero to a million dollars in a year with a membership. But what if you thought about zero to a thousand dollars a month? Mm. And what if you said, okay, now's my time. I know I can do this. 
because Sarah did this and Sarah's not special and Sarah's not different. And Sarah's just like me, right? We just talked about it. Sarah works hard and gives. And there are a lot of people in this chat that work hard and they give. And what if we could just take the next step? What's the next step, Stu? Well, um, I'm just looking here because I'm looking at the comments as they're as they're coming in, which is uh, amazing. And um, you know, one of the things that you talk about that next step, like what is that next right step? And um, and we talked about you know how you know wrapping our minds around like okay, what what how could I have an impact on my you know personal finances or my family's finances in the next six months, 12 months. And to your point, like, I love the game. You talked about, I love games. I love the game of like picking a, like a monthly recurring bill. Maybe it's the grocery bill. Maybe it's a car payment. Maybe it's the mortgage payment. Heck, maybe, maybe it's like a taking your family on a great vacation this year. And, and whatever it is, like you set a target for it, right? Like a target amount. And then you ask yourself, how many members is that? How many members would I need to welcome to be able to cover the grocery bill each month or the car payment or the mortgage payment. And, and you start, you know, focusing on that. Like, for example, like if I just grab my phone and we just do some fun math together, here's the next step for everybody, whatever financial goal it is, right? Whatever it is, let's just say it's, it is a vacation. Um, let's say it's a $7,000 vacation. Okay. We're going to take, we're going to take that $7,000 Okay. okay. And then we're going to divide that by 12 because there's 12 months in a year. And that's going to give us 583. Then we take that number and we divide it by the price of our membership. Let's assume that, you know, prices of memberships vary anywhere from like, say, 20 bucks all the way up to like hundreds of dollars. We'll just, we'll keep it fairly low at 30 bucks a month. Okay. That means all you would need to okay. pay for a $7,000 vacation for your family is 19 members. We're not talking thousands of members. We're not talking hundreds of members. We're not even talking 50 members. We're talking 19, 19. Well, actually it was 19.4. We can't, we can't round down a person. So we have to round up. So that would be 20 members, 20 members at 30 bucks a month. That's when you start to realize like, oh my gosh, like a little can have a big impact this year for my uh, fa family's finances, my business finances, et cetera. So this is why I'm passionate about memberships, uh, Sarah. And when we talk about like next step, I want to encourage people to come and join me where I'll show you and walk you through the process of conceptualizing your idea, getting clear on knowing if your idea is going to be a winner, knowing how to speak to that so that people are naturally wanting what you have, how to structure your membership, launch your membership, grow your membership, and so much more. This is what I do. This is what I've been doing since 2008, is helping tens of thousands of people launch, grow, and scale highly profitable memberships, just like Sarah, just like Tamara, just like uh, Casey Hope, and so many others. Uh, I can help you do it too, and I want to encourage you to come join us because that's what I will be walking you through in the coming weeks. And this only happens once a year. So yeah. this this only happens once a year. So I know how our brains work, ladies. I know how this works. Oh, I'll do it later. Oh, I have this to do. Oh, I'll do it later. We're going to do it now. Okay? <laughs> because a year from now, mm. Stu just said you need 19 members. Do you remember how many members I had when I started Launcher Box? I had 19 members when I started Launcher Box. All you need is 19 members. And that was going to give us $583 a month. So what if I had 40 members? That's going to give me that $1,000 in reoccurring revenue that we were just talking about. Mm. And what if we do that now and not wait another year? Stop putting it off. Stop telling yourself that you don't have time because we make time for what we want in our lives. Mm. And if your time is now, like, come on, it's a no brainer. Yeah. And the fun part about it too, like when um, I think about like the membership experience, which is that full program where we show you and walk you through this whole process. Um, again, it doesn't take very much. Again, if we use the same $30 a month membership, it's seven members, Sarah, seven members yeah, before you see, uh, you know, a, 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 after seven members, you're immediately seeing a return on that investment. And yeah. so my question to everybody is like, do you think that being immersed in this program, I'm going to give you at least one idea that will help you welcome seven new members? Well, come on, of course. 
Uh, and so that's why this becomes a no-brainer because of the nature of memberships. We see it on the subscription box side. I wanna show you how to do it on the membership side. And I wanna show you how to take and leverage the momentum that you've already got with your audience and be able to create another additional recurring revenue stream that serves them in a slightly different way, but now creates that even more stability and predictability. And so, you know, a little can do a lot when it comes with memberships. And I want to encourage you to come definitely join us. It's going to be epic. Yeah. Stu, will you go over those four membership types one more time? And then I know my team's dropping the link, my affiliate link to join. Um, but let's go over them one more time. All right, Shanita, we got you. Okay, so number one is a product-based membership. You're familiar with that. That's yep. subscription boxes. Number two, service-based memberships. That's what we talked about with you know Mary Claire Fredette, massage therapist. Now she created a membership where her members pay a monthly fee and they get a certain number of massages. Third is a knowledge-based membership. This is the most popular and easiest one to launch. It's where you're either helping people solve an ongoing problem, like uh, maybe they're overweight and they wanna get to their ideal weight, or maybe they've got a puppy that's wildly out of control and they want the perfect puppy, or maybe they've got a broken relationship and they want a thriving relationship. That's an ongoing problem that doesn't solve itself. Great for a membership. Another great uh, knowledge-based membership is where you're teaching a skill. Just like we talked about Christy Hawkins teaching women how to paint, or Tamara Bennett teaching people how to paint uh, decorative door hangers, or Casey Hope teaching people how to become a better calligraphist? Letter. Uh, Letter. Calligrapher. Calligrapher. Oh, letterer. Oh, letterer. <laughs> letterer. <laughs> they, they, make, they make letters fancy. Um, but if you want to get better at that, like uh, that's a skill, right? And, and so that's a good example of a skill-based membership. Or another opportunity for a membership is where you are helping make someone's life easier. So this is where we see memberships that fall in the category of like uh, lesson plans. So I think of um, Tara Phillips as an example. So she's in our community. She has a membership. She provides lesson plans for teachers and parents who have autistic children. This is what she specialized in for 25 years in the education system. And so those teachers don't have to worry or think about what they are going to uh, teach in their classroom with those students. She gives them the lesson plans. She has more than 850 plus members uh, in that membership. And so lesson plans, templates, we see a lot of like uh, memberships in the, again, the convenience um, type of knowledge-based membership where they're providing templates. I think of uh, social media templates. I think of, um, you know, in a variety of different niches. Ne Nicole Melton is a great example. She provides social media templates for beauty prof uh, beauty professionals. So Very niche. I love very it. Very niche, yeah. right? Like she's not providing social media templates to everybody. She's providing them to beauty professionals. And that pulls her audience closer because it makes it so much more relevant. So when we think of knowledge-based memberships, the questions I always encourage you to uh, answer are, you know, can you solve a problem? If yes, move forward. Can you teach a skill? If yes, move forward. Can you make someone's life easier? If yes, move forward. Those are all knowledge-based memberships. And then the fourth and final one is a community-based membership. This is like your mastermind, Sarah, where people pay to be part of a community of like-minded individuals. They may be in an area where they can't get access to other people or they you know, don't have access to people who have that shared interest. I know where I grew up, like I grew up out in the middle of nowhere, like corn on one side, cows on the other. So if you had a peculiar interest when I was growing up, you were like the only one. And so you kind of kept those interests to yourself. Well, now we got the internet. So all of us weirdos, we can get together, right? Like it's amazing. So you just got to create a safe place, you know, for people who've got a shared interest. And that is a community-based membership. And people are willing to pay to be surrounded by others who are on a similar journey, have a similar interest, similar passion and interest. So product-based, service-based, knowledge-based, and community-based. Yep, absolutely. Diane says, best money I've spent joining the membership experience last year. Aww. I have to say it was the most expensive thing that I ever purchased in 2018, but it was the best thing that I ever purchased because look at me now, right? Uh, I love that. So yeah, when does it all start, Stu? So uh, we are open for registration right now. We close on Thursday, so only a few days. And what I will say is... Uh, 
uh, when people join today, we have a special early bird bonus that is delivered uh, just today. So if you register before tonight at midnight, you'll get that early bird bonus. And here's what it is. You know, I've teamed up with Cody Birch, who is a uh, prominent figure in our community because he helps people specifically with developing a specific Facebook ad that you can run on a very inexpensive budget of like 10 bucks a day. But every single day, it helps you build your email list. And that email list is a engine to growing your membership. And so that whole mini training on how to build this one particular ad that continuously generates you new leads every single day, that's provided if you join us for the early bird uh, today. But registration ends on Thursday. And then the official course kicks off one week from today is when we have our opening ceremonies. And that's when the whole party begins. And we dive in and we talk about, you know, again, how to position your membership, how to talk about your membership, how to the uh, content inside your membership, how to market and launch, how to retain your members, and so much more. I cannot wait uh, to see everybody in there. That's a juicy bonus. Like that's almost worth the price of admission right there. So yeah, well, you think about it. Like every single business, we always need uh, to get in front of more people, and yeah. the more people we get in front of, the more our business grows. So. You know, Cody's renowned in our community for helping people with this particular ad. That's why I tapped him on the shoulder. I'm like, dude, would you be open to sharing this with our greater community? He's like, absolutely. And so I'm super excited to be able to share that this year. Awesome. All right, Stu, I'm going to let you go. I know you got a busy day today. Thank you so much for taking time to share all your wisdom with us today. I'm excited. I can see there's a lot of my, my members and my audience are excited in the chat, but it's our time. It's yeah. our time um, to make moves. It's our time to do something different. It's our time to build that reoccurring revenue. Yeah, and that time is right now. And you know, I want to thank you, Sarah, for you know bringing me and sharing with your audience. And I just want to take a moment and just congratulate you. You know, you have been an incredible example of what is possible in such a short period of time. And when you look at your journey over the last six years, it is mind blowing. What transformation uh, has made possible uh, in you and the lives that you are impacting. You know, we talk about the stability in the, of the recurring revenue, and that's important, 1,000%. But I also want you to think about like the lives that we get to impact and the ripple effect that we get to have with the work that we do. That to me is, that's where our legacy lies, right? And so there's so much, uh, you know, that a membership makes possible in our lives. And I just want to encourage everybody to hold space for that. And the net, the time is now. Like now is the time to do it. So much can happen in such a short period of time. I can't wait to serve you uh, inside the membership experience. So thank you, Sarah. I appreciate you, buddy. Thank you, everybody in the chat. Yep. All right. Thanks, Stu. We'll see you guys soon. See ya.